But, you know, this this glaze is like, hey man, you wanted pink? You got, you got pink. Hello, you dirty potters. How are you today? Today, I want to give you guys a glaze recipe, and it's one that I've been looking at for quite some time. Every now and then, I get on my Instagram, or I get on my Discord, and I'm like, man, I really wish I had this recipe. And because so many of you are willing to help me out, there's a bunch of people who just like send me recipes, which is fantastic, because over time, I test them, and I find one that finally works. I'm also kind of trying to finish off my glaze wall, so I still need a good red, I still need a good pink, and I still need one more color that I haven't decided yet. But the pink one's figured out, because today, we're testing June Perry's pink. June Perry's pink for me is a really good glaze, because June Perry's pink can easily be turned into June Perry's purple. I'll be giving you both glaze recipes today, because if you know how to make June Perry's pink, it's literally like one chemical away from being June Perry's purple. That being said, at the end of this episode, I will also show you the test styles for June Perry's purple as well. I've technically already made them, they're already up on my glaze wall, and if you did watch my glaze wall episode, you probably already saw them. It's like the pinkest, most darkish, technically reddish color you might see up there. And of course, as always, we will be testing it on a white test style or a B-mix test style. That's the closest thing to porcelain that most people use. And we will also be testing it on a redstone test style. This way we have a good representation of what it does on white clay and what it does on brown clay. And I've technically also already made the testers for the glaze wall myself. I have the white clay here and I have the brown clay. I just kind of need these if I'm making new recipes, so this way they're represented on the glaze wall. But I didn't show you guys this because like, do, do you guys do you guys really want to see me glaze sped up for like two minutes straight? No, no. I'll just give you the recipe and that way I just show you the test styles and we we'll click the like button and we get out of here. Everybody has a good day. But before we get going, there's something very, very important I have to tell you guys. Every glaze recipe I've been giving you, I haven't been including the specific gravity. Technically, you don't really, really need it to make the glaze recipe, but it's very important as it really measures the amount of water in your glazes, and it can change over the entire game of your glazes. Sue is the one who taught me how to do it. I will post her video and how to do it down below, but it's pretty much measuring the amount of minerals and chemicals that make up the glaze inside your glaze suspension, and the amount of water mixed together because that's pretty much what glaze is it's not magical potter juice it's pretty much glaze chemicals and water mixed in a fashion to where it's like a homogenous I should stop I should stop doing that the specific gravity which I've already measured is at 1.34 which is fairly thick might I say but also I, I really want that pink so I'm, I made it thick so here's the glaze recipe, here's the cone that we're going to be firing it off at today, and here is the specific gravity of the glaze that we will be testing today. And for those of you who are making this glaze at home, if you want to turn June Perry's pink into June Perry's purple, you can always take this recipe and just add this chemical to it. That's pretty much what it is. So I'm going to show you both test towels, although we're only going to be testing the pink today. And of course, as always, for those of you who are impatient and know how to read, I will always post the recipe down below in the description. And after this video, I will also be putting it on my Discord server so that specific commands will get this little robot and the little robot will give you the recipe. That sounds like a joke, but I'm not joking. We literally have one of those in the Discord. With all that out of the way, let's get started. Moments later. Okay, so everything's divvied out. I kind of figured you guys didn't want to see me glaze in fast forward for a good two minutes straight. So I did everything off camera with a nice SpongeBob cutscene. There's two things that I notice about this glaze. Number one, it dries a little bit slower than most glazes that I have. My Tenmuku Gold dries in like 10 seconds. My Ron Royce High Gloss Black dries in like 30 seconds at max. This stuff is still wet. If you can see it over here, this is still very shiny. I'm sure you guys can tell that this is a double layer, but even the pink part here is still a little bit 
touchy and I did glaze it like two or three minutes ago. So if you're making this glaze at home and you notice that it's a little bit slow to dry, that seems fairly normal. So let's go through all the things. So here we have it on a brown textile or a brown bowl. Here we have it on a bee mix with no grog textile or a bee mix no grog bowl. This is as close as you can get to porcelain without it actually being porcelain. And the high majority of people use bee mix with no grog or with grog in their studios anyway. So this is gonna be a good tester for most of you. These three back here are June Perry's Pink On first, and then I put Ron Roy's High Gloss Black over it. And I did it for a couple of different reasons. Number one, this one has some really good texture. I'm not sure if I can yeah i can touch it now you can probably tell that this is the carving patternized cup that i showed you in the other episode when i was showing you guys how to do patternized carving but this is june perry's pink with ron roy's high gloss black over it these are all ron roy's high gloss black over them but i wanted to see if it did anything on a texture like this this is the same exact thing except for this doesn't really have a texture this is just pink and black by itself i want to see how smooth it goes or how texturized it goes if i put it on texture or smooth stuff this is june perry's pink with ron roy's high gloss black on it as well but this is a little bit thicker and it also has way more texture than that cup over there so this is all june perry's pink and high gloss black with different textures these two here that are still too wet you can see them they're very shiny i clearly can't touch them right now this is june perry's pink underneath with randy's red on top of it this one and this one are technically brothers these two cups but these are glazed the same exact way but this one's ron roy's high gloss black and this one's randy's red there's a, there's a lot of rrs going on here randy's red and you guys can probably tell that i'm pairing these up a lot with darker glazes because i've already seen a lot of textiles for this glaze and it turns out pink or highish pink that being white and kind of pink or like deeply pink. So I think that light pink or at least that whitish pink will go really well with darker glazes. It would be kind of a waste of my glaze if I mixed in a whitish pink with white because then I would just get more white than pink. Or if I mixed in a whitish pink with like maybe another pink because then I would just get more pink. So I'm mixing it with a lot of my other kind of meltier darker glazes to see how that goes. This gourd here is pink all right here. And yes, this is what the glaze looks like, even though it's technically not pink a lot of glaze chemistry works this way you'll see a glaze that looks green and it turns red and reduction or you'll see a glaze that looks kind of red and it turns blue and oxidation but this is the natural color of the pink glaze so this is june perry's pink with randy's red kind of tuxedoed on it a little bit kind of diagonal glazed on it a little bit these two are just the glaze by itself the only difference is this is on a red clay body now i'm doing this not only because we already have another tester over there, but for two reasons. Number one, this has really good texture on it, and I want to see how it does on red clay body with a texture. Out of this entire thing, we don't really have a red texture textile. We just have textured ones, mixed ones, and then a smooth red textile over there with the bowl. So this will really show us what happens on a red textile. And another thing I want to show you before we get going. This, as many of you will remember, is my glazed textile wall. This right here is June Perry's purple, but you can probably notice that this is it on a white clay body and this is it on a brown clay body. But June Perry's purple and June Perry's pink are the same exact base, which means that there's probably a pretty good chance that this glaze is gonna turn this kind of grayish white on a brown clay body, but I've never really seen it on a good texture. So there's two kind of hypotheses. Hypothesis, 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 hy uh, uh, educated guesses. Number one, on a dark clay body, it will probably turn gray because it has the same base as that textile I just showed you over there on a brown textile clay body. Or number two, if it doesn't turn brown, that means inside of June Perry's purple, it's the extra chemical that I put in or the extra colorant that I put in that makes that gray color and it has nothing to do with brown clay whatsoever. Okay, did we do everything? Are we good? Because that was a lot of talking. This is a lot of experiments. I also have a bunch of experiments over here. So like, we, we, we good now, Dante? Okay, let's talk about the two test dials first. You know, I pulled these out last night and I was like, I don't really see any pink until the daylight came. And then I was like, oh, let me compare it to another color I already have. So this is my Lumos, which is kind of a luminescent white. And you can definitely see when you can compare the two that this is clearly very, very light pink. This of course being the same June Perry's base, I kind of expected this of the glaze. And this is pure white, like this is white, 
a little bit luminescent, a little bit runny. But this, in comparison to this, you can definitely see the pink. Now, if we look at the brown test style, I kind of expected it to be a little bit more gray, but it looks like on this specific test style, it actually turned a little bit more pink if you can see it. Again, this is the white clay, this is B-Mix with no grog, and this is redstone. And you can clearly see that these came out, like, pretty much the same, but hold your horses because I have a more pure version of red over here just to show you guys. This is the glaze on a bowl. This is also a white clay body. This is also the glaze on a bowl, but this is a red clay body. And you can very much see that this is just a little bit darker. That's, that's legit all it is. If you look at two bowls in the sunlight, you can definitely see that pink still. But you can also see that one, being the red one, of course, because it's, it's darker, is just a tiny, tiny bit darker. But it still keeps that pink, kind of light pink color that you can see on both clay bodies. These were some good testers. The only thing I really wish I would have done is put a little bit more water in the glaze because the gravity for this is 1.34 for all this. But you can see that there's a little bit of like too much of the glaze i put it in for a little bit too long and i really wish i would have put a little bit more water in it so if you're using the guidance of 1.34 specific gravity the number that i gave you before put a little bit more water in there or just make sure the glaze is a little bit thinner a good example of this is that i tested this on a couple of other cups that i didn't even record in this episode it's for another episode with the inlay technique and this came out way more pink than any of the testers that you see over here. I think the real issue is that I tried to actively brush this off multiple times, so I put glaze in here, I brushed it off with a wet sponge, and I kept doing it until I got the desired effect. This is the inlay technique, we'll talk about it later. Don't worry about it, just subscribe as you wait your turn. But you can see the spots that I put on with a damp sponge are a little bit more pink than the other spaces of the cup. Not as pink, brushed off, a little bit more pink. Not as pink right here, brushed off a little bit more pink and of course there's more water inside these parts because I brushed it off with a damp sponge so my immediate reaction is that this glaze needs a tiny bit more water I don't know how many milliliters I'm gonna do it by feel but if it feels like it's a little bit too thick probably decrease the gravity by putting more water in some pretty good testers I'm a little bit disappointed in myself because I put the glaze on way too thick but also these are still pink you know so I can't really be like oh no the glaze didn't work like clearly the glaze did work because these are pink in comparison to the other pure white test styles that i have so i'm pretty satisfied with these and we're gonna put these up on the glaze wall put the brown one right y'all and we'll put the white one right y'all good we got we got a new addition to the glaze wall now i also did a tiny bit of testing on the white clay body just to see if underglaze would work on it so i brushed a little bit here and you could see it and i also made Mega Man's face <clears throat> right here what why is Mega Man's face on there you should just don't worry about it why you why are you so curious all the time but underglaze shows very well through this so it's not like it's so powerful that you can't have underglaze underneath this and it's also not like i put it on so thick that it's non-viable you know it's, i'm right in the middle like i put it on too thick to the point where it might have just you see that a little bit? I don't like that texture. That means it's too thick. But at the same time, it's still pink. It's it's still what I asked for, so. These two gourds here are June Perry's pink on a brown or darker clay body. These are both redstone clay. And again, you can kind of see that I made it a little bit too thick. I think it would have been much better received if I put it on thinner because you can see that like it's crawling right there. But this is as I expected, as I said earlier in the video. This creates a type of grayish white pattern or a grayish white non-textured color because I mean, that's how June Perry's purple works in my studio, and I expected it to do the same exact thing. I think that I just thought if I put it on thicker on these, that I would get pink on the inlay, and that I would not get pink on the rest of it, but that's that's very untrue. The, the entire thing turned white. This does not have a very good melting effect. It's not like a dual purpose glaze, unlike June Perry's purple. June Perry's purple, you can put it on thin and it turns gray, and you can put it on again and it turns red. It's fantastic. But June Perry's pink just doesn't have the colorants it needs to have a specific melt inside the inlay of anything. So these two came out fine. These came out exactly how I expected. I might refire these later just to see what happens when I put black over them or something else that's a little bit more thin. But I'm not like I'm not sad about these. I'm just like I could turn these into something better to be honest. Lumos, what are you doing in the get out of here? Get get bro. 
These two teacups right here are Ron Roy's High Gloss Black with June Perry's Pink put on the rim of them. But I did put Ron Roy's High Gloss Black on first. And they turned out pretty good. This is actually a fairly good melt. This reminds me of my Ron Roy's High Gloss Black with Lumos on top. But my Lumos is very melty and very thick. So again, we're, we're kind of noting the thickness. We need to put a little bit more water inside this glaze. But these don't look too bad. I think uh, people would like to have these at home, honestly. I'll probably put them in the store when I open up the store. You can see a very slight pink, like it tried to come through, but you can also see that it looks like it almost lavaed. So we're, we're for sure, again, gonna put more water inside this glaze. These two cups came out great. I'm gonna keep them. I'll probably sand them down on the bottom and put them in the store. You do have to keep in mind that they are a redstone clay body, so it's, it's, it's a little bit darker than it would have been if it was a white clay body. Now this is what I was really looking forward to. This is June Perry's pink, and then I kind of slice dipped it. If that, that's not, that's, that's not a word. I kind of dipped it at an angle inside of Randy's red, and this turned out great. I really wish that I would have put a thinner coat on here because you can see it kind of bubbling in the middle, and it's definitely not like it bubbled. It just looks like it. This is more of a textured thing than anything else. It kind of cratered, but this is not in non-food safe areas, so I can still sell this. I can still put a cork in it and make it into like an official bottle, but I'm pretty happy with the way that this came out. Hopefully you can see it, but this middle texture here tinted me to something else, and I did another kiln load with the same glaze. And this, and this are the exact same glaze. The difference is that this one was way better taken. So this is also June Perry's pink on first, and then I put just a very slight Randy's red. I just dipped it real quick. I, I was kind of worried about it being too thick at that point. By like the fifth, <laughs> by like the fifth bottle, I had learned my lesson. Like. Mm. Maybe that's too thick. Maybe I add more water. So I added a little bit more water and the pink came out great on the inside. Um, but on the outside, I mixed it with Randy's Red and man, I absolutely found a new glaze combination that is probably going to be my favorite for quite some time. Not to mention, I did recently fix my Randy's Red. So this is kind of what it truly looks like when it's mixed properly. This was a good find for me. I'll probably take a picture of this and put it in my Potter's notes that like June Perry's pink and Randy's red work fantastic together if you layer one over the other. My only sadness is that I didn't put Randy's red and then pink on top. I did it pink and then red on top. And I have a couple others over there. I think I had the same idea like four times in a row. I was like, oh, I haven't tested June Perry's pink and, and red yet. I'll do that. And then I had this cup and I was like, oh, I haven't tested June Perry's pink and red yet. Oh, I, I guess I'll do that. And then I had this cup, and I was like, oh, I, I haven't tested June Perry's pink and red yet. I guess I'll do that. But <laughs> I did, though. I did it multiple times. I might just keep this one for myself, but this for sure is probably going in the store. I know a lot of people kind of like this effect right here without it actually affecting the function of the food safety of this, of this bottle. So I'm going to put a cork in this, and I'll probably put it in the store. This bottle right here. Hey, look. Yeah, I know I have a lot of gourds. I got a little gourd crazy the other night, all right? Chill. Just... Leave your comments in the, in the below comment thing. This here is the June Perry's pink with Ron Roy's high gloss black on top of it. And I kind of expected it to come out this way simply because I know that Randy's red has a lot of red iron oxide in it and a little bit of cobalt, like a very, very little cobalt. That being said, this is very much usual of Ron Roy's high gloss black seen as sometimes it can turn green, it can turn red, it can turn yellow. The, the list of things that red iron oxide can do inside your glazes goes on forever. Even this page right here by Digital Fire is like, it can do all these things. So whenever I mix my Ron Roy's high gloss black with a lighter glaze, it usually turns this type of green. I can safely say that I like it, but I can also safely say that I have like a bunch of other clears that I can mix with Ron Rice High Gloss Black that'll probably do the same exact thing. So it's good to know these two glazes play along well with each other, but it's also not like I discovered something totally and, and awesomely new, you know?
Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. I really just wanted to give you guys kind of something to play with while you're home with the quarantine and all that. Um, just something to give you guys if you have a couple extra chemicals around. The main thing with this glaze is that you might want to make the gravity a little bit lower by adding a little bit more water. This gravity of this glaze, I, I have it written down over here somewhere, was 1.34. So you, you might want to make it like even 1.3, 1.25 if you know how to measure specific gravity. I already added a bunch of water last night. I'm gonna test the gravity right after, right now. Either add a little bit more water or make sure this is not put on very thick because this is a very sticky, nice glaze. I believe it has bentonite in it. If you'd like to see any of my actual artwork, the links are always down below for your beautiful Potter eyes. The Instagrams, the Facebooks, um, we for sure ain't getting on Twitter right now because people are panicking like this was the Spanish flu, which, I mean, but my, I, I, I got people I talk to that have been alive for more than 100 years. They, they know what's good. I give this glaze four out of five dirty potters because it's a good glaze. It's nice and stable. Uh, all you really have to do is put it on pretty thin or at least put a little bit more water in the glaze, at least more than I did. And it comes out fairly well. It mixes with a lot of other darker glazes. But, you know, the main issue is that, like, it's, it's not like Randy's Red where it comes out like four different colors with one application like that color and that color and that color and that like randy's red gets a five out of five because it comes out a myriad of things but you know this this glaze is like hey man you wanted pink you got, you got pink i hope your next kill and load comes out fantastic remember to wash your hands for more than 20 seconds you dirty dirty potters and i will see you dirty potters next week This seems like a very weird thing to ask at the end of a video, but can somebody please make this June Perry's pink base and then put like 0.05% of chrome oxide in it so I can see what happens? I'm lazy.